So hi everyone, uh, I'm San Utama Shod. I am the producer, one of the producer and the director and also editor of the film I Don't Want to Be Just a Memory. Um, it's a short 20 minutes um, short documentary film that depicts the queer community of Berlin nightlife in grieving together and finding critical discussion together about mental health and substance use in Berlin. And yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, hi, I'm Tinka. I'm one of the protagonists in the short movie, I Don't Want to Be Just a Memory. Um, and in the film, I'm talking about my two friends that uh, passed away and how it affected me. And um, yes, that's it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki Miller and I was a camera assistant of Julian Kuriako in uh, Not Just a Memory. It really took Giovanni, who is all of these amazing things, to just call me one day and tell me, hey, bitch, I know that when you're not okay, you don't want anybody to know and you don't want anybody by your side, but you can't do that. You can't be doing this to yourself. We are your friends and we are here for you. I felt his pain and that mirrored in me. Do you know what I mean? And that really made me realize that another individuality need to embrace their need, their integral, internal need for other people. Two days a week in a club high are not enough. We need intimacy every day. We need love every day. Hi, welcome to the Tadi TV. My name is Jean Borbobak, and this time we are talking about the film I Don't Want to Be Just a Memory. Hi, welcome to the Tadi. Welcome to the Berlinale. Hi. Thank you for being here. <laughs> um, maybe let's just start um, with what was your point of departure for this film? What was the moment where you decided to make this film? Uh, yeah, I think like first and foremost, it start off from from living in this city, I guess, because like, mm -hmm. I think we all live here for many years. And um, so this movie was not coming from like, oh, let's make a movie, but more like yeah. a lot of these incidents that uh, the film talk about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them happen along the year, especially during COVID. Mm -hmm. And then I think it start off from that, because me and Nikki are also both filmmakers for ourselves. Like we did a lot of things before. Mm -hmm. And there was this Facebook group that I just decide one day to post on it. like. Oh, you know, it has been for a few years about our friends who died. Let's just try to do something about it and who's down. I think so many people post on this mm. just little Facebook. Uh, because back then it was Facebook. No? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not anymore. Um, so, so yeah, that, that kind of start off somehow. And this is in 2021. Okay. Um, and I think that since then a lot happened in, in developing this project with Klaus Salmin and Nordic Media House. Um, and I co-wrote the script or the kind of treatment of it with Karim Bahosa, um, who also lost one of their friends also. So there was a lot of trying to think what this project could be without knowing or kind of trying to fix too much what it should be. Yeah. Because it could be, but has nothing mm -hmm. what it should be somehow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, the film deals with loss um, at a great extent. I was wondering how did you approach this topic to portray? Because obviously this is like very sensitive. It's like very intimate stories are being shared. Um, yeah, so I was wondering how did you approach this? Yeah, I think sort of like during that sort of development phase that me and Klaus were touring around and talking and, and talking and talking, talking mm. a lot, um, I realized that like, 
we want to create like an open space um, for each character, each scenes, each moment to unfold itself. So we would don't want to say like, okay, please make a scene about this, but what do you want to do? Mm. And so it came into the idea that we would ask the protagonists, including Tinka, who is here, um, to organize their own activities of what they want to do um, yeah. in approaching the topic, right? And I think for you, for you, we, you decided to to create like the the little gathering around the tree, where yeah. that was dedicated to one our friends. We had we yeah. had two scenes that we did together, like one scene, um, like the friends of um, our deceased friends, we um, adopted a tree in Hasenheide, mm. and so um, we gathered at a tree and brought him some flowers and talked about memories of him. Yeah. It, that was one scene. And the other one was at my place where like, I'm a collector of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have objects that I have of my uh, two friends that died. And so I talked a little bit about that and then read a little bit from my diary and showed photos and just like all the things that are yeah, connected with the memories. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned at the end of the film that um, that you worked with an et ethical documentary model. Can you tell a bit more about this particular model? Yes, um, and I think that's also one one that me and Klaus, uh, as a part of the team, I think everyone we were like ten to fifteen people involved behind. Uh, we, we all agree that because it's a very sensitive subject. Yeah. We don't want to force anyone to go in any direction they don't want to. Mm -hmm. And it came off from, of course, from, I think, for us filmmakers, especially also some of us are involved with, let's say, erotic or sexual, like kind of, you know, visual image, that, that there is this principle of, of awareness or like, you know, intimacy coordinator, whatever you call it that in, in pornographic um, industry, you know, the, the consent is key. And so somehow, you know, in the nightlife, I so saw in the queer parties that we went to, now we have an awareness team which made sure that everything consensual, which is not just, you know, having sex, it's also like, can I talk about this, you know? So I think we, we brought that idea to, to filmmaking that, you know what, let's do it. Um, and, and so we, we established like um, two persons, um, Celine and Christina Paulus. Um, who, who make sure that the protagonists and people behind the camera are all happy um, and comfortable with the situation. They were um, very lovely in checking in yeah. with us if we're still okay and giving mm. us cuddles if we needed it. And yeah, yeah. That's, that, that sounds very, very great for sure. And you mentioned a lot of people um, that you worked with, so it really seems like that this was a very collaborative effort. Um, that was really coming from the community and also it feels like that the film in some ways is somewhat addressed to the community as well. Can you elaborate a bit on this aspect of the film? Well, uh, first, uh, as we as said, uh, Santwe, the group that uh, he chose to work with were volunteers uh, for uh, from the community where we all have in common this loss of friends. Huh? Like all of us, we lost the same friends. So, um, uh, like for example, I'm a filmmaker, but I, would, I was like camera assistant of Julian. And um, all, the, all the group, the, 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 the crew was part of our surrounding in Berlin. And so, yeah, there was a real uh, sharing of the grief of uh, mourning together, mm. healing together, by doing this um, this film. Yeah, thank you, Sam, yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you asked me or if I wrote you on Facebook, but I really wanted to be part of it because mm. it's, I feel it's so important that uh, it's talked about and that our friends are remembered and that it's not just yeah. It just fades away and no one talks yeah. about it because yeah I, I do think it has a big effect on the community community mm. thank you and i want to add also that like the in the, the because like you know you have so many queer films and now the issue of representation or you know like 
queer film made by queer LGBT persons, right? You know that that is uh, sometimes the conversation. Um, but I think for our project, it was not just a queer film. It's actually a film made by people who lost something. Mm. We also lost yeah. some queer space um, that we shot in in the location. Yeah. Um, used to be illegal bar, illegal clubs, you know, that surround the city, and these are also where we first met in many of them. And so, you know, it's also not just this sort of identity project that ah, yeah. because we are queer, we are here. No, that we are here because we lost something. Yeah. And and yeah, to share space. So I think in a lot of scenes when we shot, it felt like a friend gathering. Mm. Even there, there was a camera, of course, there was some stress, but but we all know each other anyway. So I'm like, ah, hi, 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 you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the protagonists knew each other, even the crew, we knew everyone. Yeah. So it felt really, uh, like comfortable also for us to share yeah. like the stories. Yeah. Well, obviously Berlin is like a major part of this. Um, we already touched upon this a tiny bit. Um, there was this one line in the film that really stood out to me when somebody is talking about that they're not gonna, that they, after a while they decided that they don't they they're just not gonna let this city run over them because they mm -hmm. want to live here yeah. um and like it's a very um like somehow this whole topic that you're working on is so deeply intertwined with this city and with the community here mm -hmm. and i was really wondering how do you see this link um from your personal point of view as well what is it about this city that that moves in in this particular direction and with this particular pace? Um, like what I think is that a lot of people, um, a lot of queer people, don't feel safe in their own country, in their own communities. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not in their own families. And Berlin draws these people here because Berlin is more accepting of queerness. And we have a lot of queer spaces and we have this giant queer community. So people are drawn here, but I think they come with their own traumas from their experiences mm. from their childhood. And the mixture of bringing this trauma into the city with the um, availability of drugs, this causes a lot of um, issues. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think this is the cause why we lose so many people. Mm. The mixture of the trauma and the drugs and, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the, the film also investigates kind of the role of community in this. And there's also um, this one protagonist who talks about that, okay, like, we are a big family here, but then also, this is what we're gonna then reproduce because yes. that's what family is. And then I wonder, how could this dynamic change? What, what is kind of um, the task ahead of the community to change these patterns? I, I think it's an ongoing conversation, and hopefully, this film would be first steps, or many other film might be a first steps to addressing mm. these issues, right? And um, I think the, I mean, ultimately, you know that that a movie, in my own personal view, yeah. movie is a movie. It's it's not a therapy. Uh, it's not a doctor. It it cannot necessarily sort of save you, but it mm. can bring conversations that you can have with your friends. Um, and then ultimately, you know, are we also as a community, as a people behind the movie, take this responsibility somehow to be more aware of the issue. You know, I'm and I'm sure. Even before making this film, right? You know, when when our friend also one protagonist of the film passed away, Rob Talin, um, who is mm. playing the guitar, that I want to. This is recent. This is last December, actually, when when we received the news that the film is in Berlinale, yeah. and it it hit me so much to realize that. Yeah, maybe it's not just this project, but something needs to happen because it also literally happened in the time of you know trying to release this film. Um, for the fact that we really need to be aware of it and, and trying to make sure that I think there was a phrase of saying that like you know um, being just together for the weekend is not enough yeah. we need to 
watch out each other, check in, make sure that there are relationships, and carrying that spread throughout the week, and also in dark times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do think we need more support systems. Like I, since I speak German, I s try to support my friends finding therapy, but there's not enough therapy spots, no, uh, and not enough um, help centers for queer people to access help. Mm. Um, there's not enough um, clinics to, um, uh, what's the word? Um, rehab. Rehab. Yeah, not enough rehabs for people that don't speak German. There's just not enough resources and like, yeah, it's really important that we're aware of this issue, that we try to stay in contact with the friends who we know are struggling, but there also needs need to be more support systems because we ourselves that are also struggling, yeah, um, we can't keep everyone alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. Let's talk a bit about the, the, the visual identity of the film. How did that come about? It was very evocative and it was um, very poetic as well at points. Um, can you tell us a bit um, about that more in detail? Yes, um, I think like we, I mean, there were sort of this normal scene, sort of quote unquote normal, no? So when, when people gathered, when people were mm -hmm. talking, so you know, like, that we shot together in the former cake, which is this illegal space, something in Neukölln, or in also in a squad house, um, which also used maybe a normal sort of camera. So, you know, there's a certain distance also to, to what's happening because I want, I told everyone that like, don't think too much about my film, just do whatever that you feel comfortable to do and we will make it work somehow. So mm. that was the, the thing, what I, what I agreed with all the protagonists. And so we we create also a certain sense of closeness, but distance because you know I don't want to like okay please come closer because the camera cannot see you like, mm -hmm. just like let's work it out. Yeah. But there was a lot of improvisation, I guess. Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, I think the the thing that was less improvised was this micro shot of of the mushrooms mm -hmm. and and the sunflowers and and the, so the thing that grows. Um, these were not really improvised, so basically we went to this um, lab called Top Lab um, where they, they, Alessandro Vopano, uh, Vop, um, Vopato, um, he researched a lot about this, how to apply mushrooms and with, with design. Mm -hmm. So, you know, furniture, da da da. Yeah. And he showed us a lot of samples from him where we were just, I think me and Julian were just there like for five hours just like, <laughs> mm. Like, yeah, really try to work with these micro shots. Um, of course, a lot of them were kind of improvised sort of to see what, what we see there, but we know yeah. exactly we are looking at this very micro lens. Um, and, and I think the, the, the part that, that is um, the green, there was a kind of picture of this green light that was sort of like looked like a universe, like a dust around. These are also the, the growing dark mushroom um, that that in order to see the light of it, you need to open the shutter speed very long. Mm -hmm. So I think one shot to take this picture took like almost three minutes just to let the camera stand there and yeah. in a complete darkness. And I think after that, experiencing with this shot of, of the green little light in the dark, um, I feel like that's perhaps a metaphor for some of us somehow, you know, you, you stare so long into the dark until you see a little light mm. in it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But also the mushrooms that are kind of a connected network. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the connection uh, between us. Yeah, because that was obviously a very prominent, this whole mushroom metaphor that was running through the film. And I, I was just about to, to ask about <laughs> that. Like, what was it about these mushrooms? But yeah, obviously, this connecting element of mushrooms um, connect even like invisible ways and. and like an organism. Things. Yeah. Self-organized thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, yeah, so we talked about 
how it is about memory and grief um, and also awareness, this project. Um, but I'm curious, because obviously working on some topic that is so personal, that is coming from so close um, to you, um, I would imagine that that's not necessarily an easy task to to work on um, and to work it into a film. Um, so I was wondering um, what did this project actually do to you as a person um, and in what ways did it help or didn't help with, um, with coping uh, with these losses and, and these experiences? Oh. <laughs> um, it's really hard to say. Um, for me, I think it was important to share. Mm. Um, and like during the filming, it didn't affect me so much. The moment it, it actually affected me was when I first saw the movie. Mm. <laughs> like I, I watched it only twice now, but both times I uh, cried like a waterfall. Mm. And it's weird because in the moment we were filming, I wasn't like that. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's hard to. Yeah, for me the question's really hard. Yeah. How how it's if it helped or if it affected me negatively. I, I think neither. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. <laughs> um, just that I'm really happy that there is something that remembers my friends. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 For me, it's the same. It's something having like this this image from us together, working together, making something together mm. that is sad and um, and yeah it changed a lot also my uh, point of view as a filmmaker mm. because I'm a filmmaker making fiction yeah. but uh, this uh, togetherness and we watched the movie the first screening was together yeah. we cried a lot yeah. we were like having uh, no distance when we were making it and just the result is just like mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And somehow it makes me want to do even more <laughs> because, yes, like Sand mentioned, we lost even more friends since the making of the movie. We lost two and more friends after the making of the movie. And mm -hmm. I, f I feel like, I don't know, I, I want to scream from the rooftops that just people outside of the scene also know and understand what's going on. Yeah. 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 But it's a powerful medium. For mm -hmm. sure, it it can it can do a lot, and yeah, hopefully this film will also reach a lot of people. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. I would. It worked as in for me also. I mean, as as also someone who, I think we all kind of growing up. Let's say it, even in in from this particular universe or scene, mm. um, you know. So it, it, it's from for us, it's a part of our life somehow. Like I, and I I wrote a while ago that I. I am the filmmaker of this film, of course, but like without these people and this space and this memory, I would not be able to do it. It's a mm. part of our life. And so somehow, you know, it is also in a positive way, it helped me to accept that, that you know, um, yeah, this is how I grow up, you know, this is sort of my people and, and, and we need to be able to handle where we call home, maybe a bit in a better way, maybe mm -hmm. in a more awareness way. Of course, I cried every time. I, I mean, especially during the editing, it, it just like like click click. Oh <laughs> God, I can't <laughs> imagine. <laughs> um, and uh, and I, I think that this is gonna be a first project for what future project to come. Um, I told everyone also that that we will continue. We have I think um, twenty hours of footage that we did not use because it's a short film, yeah. and we can do more in the future and. Sort of hopefully trying to find the dialogues between also big cities in Europe, big queer cities in Europe, where this there's a clash between hedonism, right? You know, happy, whatever, free, and and the sense of real caring community that should be there. And so that's that's a process for me. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. uh, sounds very promising for sure. Uh, thank you for all of you uh, for being here and sharing all these stories with us. And I wish you all the best for the Berlinale mm -hmm. and hopefully the film will travel long and it will reach a lot of people because it's important that, um, that indeed we, we talk about these issues and, and we come together as a community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.